Creed 2 is directed by Stephen Capel Jr. and follows Ryan Coogler's extremely good Creed, which blew me away. Despite following the formula of most Rocky films, that film had so much heart and it was just a massive surprise and it's one of my favorite films in the Rocky franchise. So going into Creed 2, I was a bit nervous. Uh, this has been a very disappointing year for film. A lot of movies have let me down movies that I was looking forward to, and so I was uh, crossing my fingers going into this one. And in this film, Creed is challenged by Ivan Drago's son. And if you've ever seen Rocky IV, you know there's a lot of bad blood between the Dragos and Creed and Rocky. So if you've never seen Rocky IV, I guess, spoiler warning, but Ivan Drago killed Apollo in the ring. And so there's a lot of anger there from, from Donnie in this film, and he really wants to avenge his father's death. And so the boxing match that we're all hoping to see has a lot more drama and a lot more weight behind it personally for these characters, uh, especially because this film actually does a really great job of fleshing out the Drago family. They're not just the big, strong bad guys who glare at everyone and get really angry and you want to see them get punched in the face real good. They actually set up a lot of behind-the-scenes personal drama with them and I was very taken aback by that. And that's something about this movie that felt very fresh when compared to the other Rocky films. I actually understood the bad guys. I understood their position. They have as much on the line as Creed does in the movie, so you can almost get invested in both sides. And it makes it a considerably more emotional experience than perhaps Rocky IV would have taken these characters if this exact film was made in the late 80s. Because this is a movie that takes the Rocky IV uh, characters and what went on there, a very cheesy, very silly 80s movie with hearts on fire, which I still listen to and is absolutely incredible. By the way, I made a crappy Rocky montage one time with that song with my buddy John Flickinger. Here's a clip. This film takes those cheesy 80s sweat-drenched roots, which admittedly is a major guilty pleasure of mine, and turns it into a grounded and realistic film. I really enjoyed this movie. I had a blast watching it. I felt something. This movie made me feel something. My cold, jaded heart was broken into by this movie, and I actually had emotions. And a lot of that is due to Michael B. Jordan, who is one of the best actors of his generation. When that guy gets going, man, and he's he's got the tears flowing, and, and he's just so energetic about what he wants to do, and he's so passionate, this character, it, it, I just really feel for him, and I really kind of care about him. And, and Sylvester Stallone, once again, uh, in the role that is iconic for him, gives a fantastic performance as Rocky Balboa because he has a nice arc in the film as well, dealing with his family and the estrangement from his child. And there's a lot on his shoulders too. This film absolutely follows a formula that other Rocky movies do, and a lot of critics are probably going to pinpoint that as a problem. This is the eighth movie in this franchise. I'd like to see a filmmaker make a Rocky film without a boxing match, without an inspirational training montage, without wisdom bomb scenes in which people talk and, and inspire each other and say things that are meant to get you up and get you pumped. Try making that movie. Try making a Rocky movie that doesn't follow the formula of the rest, and we'll see if critics like it. Oops. <laughs> Even the first Creed film followed a very similar formula to all the Rocky movies. It just did it with great care and really good dialogue and direction and incredible fight scenes. This film is directed by Stephen Capel Jr., who inspires me for a number of reasons. One, he made a damn good movie. He made actually a really good sequel. But he's also from Cleveland, where I'm from, and he's a good filmmaker from here, and he's out there and he's working and he's making good shit. Like, that's very inspiring to me, someone who is also, since I was 14, uh, been trying to make short films and, and stuff like that, and, and trying to get my name out there too in regards to filmmaking. And so that's super inspiring to me, and, and I think he did a great job with the film. The boxing matches are very white-knuckled. Uh, there's some really good POV shots. Nothing quite as interesting as the one take that was in Creed, but I also understand that um, you wouldn't want to just do another one take sequence. You want to put your own stamp on this film. Dolph Lundgren was actually really excellent as Ivan Drago. Again, I must emphasize that these villain characters were given a lot of meat 
Uh, they weren't just the bad guys with muscles that uh, punch things. Like they, they really had a lot behind them. And I, I started to understand both sides. Michael B. Jordan, as I've already said, is terrific in this movie, as is Stallone. Tessa Thompson, also really emotional performance, fantastic work. I think these movies are spaced out in just the right amount of time where you have enough in between them to where you are ready to see another inspirational boxing movie that has similar themes and similar scenes as the rest. But they're doing a good job of maintaining what the first film set up and even extending his arc even more because he was a young man under the shadow of his father who wanted to prove himself. He wanted to prove that he wasn't a mistake. In this film, he's proved that, but now, he has this nagging thing that's that's under the surface, what happened to his father, and if there's some way he can kind of make it right in his mind. There's this great scene between um, Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson where they're talking about how boxing is what he knows how to do. It's what he loves. He doesn't know how to do anything else that well, and you can't ask him to stop that because it's part of him. He's passionate about that, and she understands that because she's passionate about her music. And so they make a really nice couple as well. There's a lot of scenes where you feel like you can totally feel that chemistry. And that's why I feel like maybe this should be the last Creed film. It probably won't be. But just the fact that this is a good movie and it's not a terrible movie and it still maintains the Rocky legacy as well as the Creed legacy and takes it to new heights in regards to what they can do with that character, I feel like he's had his arc. And if they make another one it's going to get into the silly territory like they did in the 80s. After Rocky 2, you know, that kind of maintained the storyline, but then Rocky 3 was kind of silly, then Rocky 4 was really silly, and so I feel like it'd be a good idea for them to just leave it at this because this was a good send-off. If they do another one, we'll see what happens. Um, but I was really pleased with this movie. I think it's a really well-done boxing film that is admittedly formulaic, but do you want to not see inspiring shit when you go to these movies. I mean, I think this is a damn good movie and I am proud that the filmmakers from Cleveland. I'm gonna give Creed 2 an A minus. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Uh, look forward to more reviews very soon as well as an interview with Stephen Capel Jr. I was able to meet him and talk to him for a while. We talked about filmmaking, short films, Sundance, all kinds of stuff. Um, Really a genuine guy, like super real. I was really uh, happy to be able to meet him and talk to him, and that interview will be up in a few days. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.